All right, we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you with a response video to Moly, also known as Warmoth Strat on the YouTubes, and his top five Japanese foods. And this is going to be a list of my own top five Japanese foods. And uh, these are in no particular order, by the way, because I love them all like my children. They're, you know, figuratively and literally a part of me. So, <laughs> with that said, here we go. Number five. Tonkatsu, also known as a pork cutlet. It's basically just a, uh, a little cutlet of pork, fry it up, put it on uh, a whole bunch of different dishes and things like that. Even by itself, it's pretty good, but I always like it partnered with uh, other dishes, which also make the list. So, yeah. Tonkatsu. Good stuff. Number four. Miso soup. Uh, it's basically the uh, uh, pretty much a necessity when you're, when you're talking about Japanese dinner. And it's served with damn near every Japanese dinner. I, I can't think of a of a single dinner setting in Japan that does not have or offer a miso soup. That's just, you know, you got your miso soup, you got your white rice, and everything else. It's essential. So, <laughs> miso soup. Miso hungry. <laughs> so, number three, curry rice. And uh, I know I've talked about this a lot in my videos. Um, out here where I live in Japan, uh, in Yokosuka, Yokosuka is very famous for uh, curry because it was imported originally by the British Navy when they were still occupying India. So they got it from India, imported it to the British Navy, British Navy gave it to the Japanese Navy, and it's kind of, you know, piled out into even the American Navy, you know, which uh, I'm a part of, by the way. So, um, curry rice is really good, uh, both the Japanese curry rice and the Indian curry rice, which I've also had. You know, they're, some people say you know, they swear by the Indian curry versus the Japanese curry. They say the Indian curry is a little more authentic. It's a lot spicier and things like that. And I guess, you know, since it came from India, I have to agree that it's more authentic. That doesn't necessarily mean it's better. So, you know, Japanese curry is good too. Uh, and I, I can't decide between Japanese and Indian curry. It's all, it's good stuff. It's, Mm, good stuff, good stuff. And if you're a fan of curry, I definitely recommend uh, making a visit down to Yokosuka. It's about uh, two hours south of Tokyo and about 30 minutes, 30, 45 minutes south of Yokohama. And it's definitely a, a neat place to check out for uh, the curry as well as some American-themed shops and things like that. So if you're into that sort of thing, check it out. So, moving on to number two, ramen. And this both includes the... Uh, ramen you get at the ramen shops, as well as like the instant ramen, you know, the instant noodles, cup noodles, stuff like that. So, um, I've, I've done a video before showing off uh, how Japanese uh, instant ramen uh, differs from like the stuff you get in America or whatever. So, typically like what Americans think of when they think of ramen, they think like uh, either like the little cup noodle stuff, or they think of like the block of noodles with like this MSG terrible filled spice packet and you just boil it in the water and that's it. <laughs> but in Japan it's uh, there's a lot more detail and a lot more love that goes into uh, the prepackaged ramen and uh, you can get uh, ones with different kinds of noodles. You can get like the, the normal flour noodles, you can get like the buckwheat noodles, uh, different sizes. You can get like the super thin almost angel hair like noodles. You can get the thick noodles. Um, you can get different kinds of broths as well. You know there's just so many different possibilities and also they add in like dried vegetables and like dried meat and different spice packets and just the possibilities are endless it's, it's so good and of course the uh, the ramen from the ramen shops I mean <laughs> that's my jam right there man and it was hard to uh, say which I like better because like I said in Yokosuka curry is like king curry is king in, in Yokosuka but uh, ramen is certainly no slouch either, and it's just, uh, uh, I love it so much. But if I had to pick a, uh, a particular ramen uh, that I like, it's uh, tonkatsu ramen. And uh, basically, instead of like a fried pork cutlet, like I said uh, earlier with the regular tonkatsu, it's uh, just like pork bits. So it's just like sliced pork and you put it on the ramen and good stuff, good stuff. And yes, it is okay to slurp, it's considered so anyway, moving on to number one, canned coffee. And I know what you're thinking, you know, coffee's not necessarily a very Japanese thing. It's like, oh, people, when they think of Japan, they think of like tea and, you know, stuff like that, and, you know, zen and mm, you know, stuff like that. But in Japan, coffee is like, 
<laughs> super abundant. And uh, back in the day, uh, I used to drink a lot of energy drinks and stuff like that. But since moving out to Japan, I've pretty much stopped drinking energy drinks altogether. And I switched exclusively to coffee, uh, in particular black coffee, because that's the nectar of the gods right there, man. And I know what you're thinking, oh, black coffee is so disgusting, so bitter, mm, whatever. But th there's, there's like a whole, like I said, a whole smorgasbord of different coffee flavors and different uh, amounts of stuff in it. You can get it like straight black, like I normally like it. You can get like an espresso, you can get like a cafe au lait, which has like a shit ton of uh, milk, sugar, and all this other stuff. And you can get them in different sizes too. You can get them like like the little like almost like an espresso, like a shot shot glass size to like the friggin' you can get like a 20 ounce big ass thing of coffee. And I'm talking straight black coffee too. So none of that Namby Pamby Starbucks friggin' Java Monster Rockstar bullshit. Whatever. I, I, that stuff's that stuff's shit. And also, mm, excuse me. And also. Uh, one other thing I gotta talk about, you know, one involving canned coffee, is the fact that uh, you can get one that's very low in calories too. Because, um, you know, when I shopped around for like canned coffee uh, back in the States, just kind of looking around, seeing, you know, oh, what's America got for canned coffee? Um, it, it was typically like the super heavily sugared, high in calories, like even the little Starbucks shots are like 80 calories, which doesn't sound like a lot. But compared something to a similar size that tastes way better, in Japan it's like maybe 40 to 50 calories. So if you're uh, if you're one of them uh, calorie conscious people and stuff like that, you know canned coffee in Japan you just can't beat it. And another fun fact, black coffee in Japan, no calories, none, zippo, zen, none, <laughs> doesn't exist, not a thing. So um, yeah, speaking of. All this Japanese food, uh, it's getting me really hungry, so I gotta go. So, <laughs> that said, this is the Andy Song. Sign up for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in to this video and my other stuff. And if you guys have some uh, five favorite Japanese foods, be sure to uh, leave them in the comments below as either words, or you can even uh, put a link to a video response in the comments below as well. So, um, definitely look forward to what you guys have to say, both in the words and in the visual. The visual. <laughs> stuff like that so yeah uh, thanks for tuning in as always I also gotta thank you guys for liking the thumbs and other peripheral devices comment subscribing send a few friends to the party and hey as always we'll see you next time catch you there guys bye